So last night was our town hall meeting. Thank you to those of you who joined us. Town hall meetings in my practice are used for churchwide movements or for happenings that affect the entire body and help set direction for the, for the family. You may recall about a year ago, we had a town hall meeting in regards to the denominational debate and wrestle with the marriage and ordination of our brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ community. That's the kind of thing that a town hall meeting is about. And we've been planning for several weeks leading up to last night. We gave an opportunity for people to submit questions and we got about two dozen. Uh, about a quarter were related to preschool, about a quarter were related to social justice and ministry, about half were uh, focused on operations and campus and so forth. And last night we tried to get as many as we could. There were a few, uh, three or four that were submitted that were outside the purview or outside the focus of the evening. Uh, for example, some, some type of uh, conversation around a church vote in regards to the denomination. Uh, the denomination is going to pick that debate back up next year and it's premature to talk about a vote until we know really what we're voting about. And so uh, that wasn't addressed last night. Our focus last night was twofold. One was to talk about reopening and what our plans were for reopening. And we put a lot of time and effort into thinking about that and what that looks like. We've been in a lot of conversation with other churches and with our denomination who also sets guidelines for us. And then to talk about some restructuring that is going on in the church and uh, some of the reality of that. And so I just want to take a minute to reframe the, the, the conversation last night to kind of lay the groundwork of uh, what we talked about as a reminder. And I started really by talking about how difficult this time of pandemic has been. And, and clearly you know this, you know of the loss of those who have had the illness and those that have lost loved ones. We have folks in our church family that have lost loved ones and have had the illness. Uh, but the loss that is greater than that, the loss of significant events like graduation and the loss of the ability to be with loved ones and the loss of income, the loss of the financial crisis this has created for so many. It has been a very difficult time. And, and part of what's made it so difficult is the unknown. This pandemic has drawn on and it doesn't feel like uh, it has settled or landed. When we made plans several weeks ago in writing about reopening, the state was reopening up and the cases were in decline and now we've seen a spike. And we yesterday heard from the CDC who raised the risk level of church from a five to an eight on a scale of 10. And so, so this has been a challenge for us. It's been a challenge for us as a church uh, we're the incarnate body, body of Christ. We are the physical, tangible presence of Christ. We are people who gather. The Greek word for church is ecclesia. It's the gather, the called out, the gathering of the followers of Jesus. And so uh, our understanding of what it means to be church and our, our practice of the faith has been severely affected. And I, I don't really need to uh, explain that. You, you get that. It'd be easy as a church family to kind of just uh, try to tread water and hope that things pass quickly and uh, we would get back to what was if we ever could get back to what was. And that'd be fine if we didn't care where we wound up. There's an old Peanuts cartoon, uh, great theology. In the Peanuts cartoon, Charlie Brown is shooting a bow and arrow and he shoots the arrow and, and where it lands he goes and he draws the bullseye around the arrowhead where it's landed. And Lucy says, no, you got it all wrong, Charlie Brown. You, you draw the bullseye and then you shoot the arrow at it. And, and Charlie Brown says, well, well, this way I get a bullseye every time. You know, we, we don't want to just drift and wind up where we may. Uh, and that's the second frame that I, that I really tried to stress last night is that uh, we're seeking and, and trying and working to be very intentional. We're, we're really uh, putting a lot of thought and effort towards being the church that God has called us to be. This is a conversation that began a number of years ago with our long range plan. It's been part of our execution for the last couple of years, being the church that God has called us to be. And I'd like just to take a minute to, to just remind us some of what the scripture says about what it is to be church. And the, and the first passage is from the book of Ephesians chapter four and uh, verse 11. 
So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Paul says there's really two purposes of the church, and the first is to equip the saints for works of service. And the service uh, is not done just for the sake of serving. Service is done for a purpose, so that the body of Christ may be built up. Now, this is not talking about the institution. Paul is not talking about First United Methodist Church. Rather, he's talking about the body of Christ and particularly the presence of Christ being known. Uh, and you remember in the Bible, to know is to, to have a relationship experience with. It's not head knowledge, it's a relational experience. And so Paul is saying that, that the first purpose of the church is to equip all of us to serve so that the presence of Christ may be known in the community. And, and we're doing that when we go to Kenya and we we help people find a sustainable income because they are a valued child of God and that God loves them. We're doing service so that the presence of Christ may be known. We teach God to preschoolers and let them know that they're a beloved child of God and God is with them. We're serving so that the, the presence of Christ may be known. The second purpose of the church is to reach spiritual maturity. And it's marked by several things. First, it's marked by the fullness of Christ, that is, uh, the likeness of Christ. It's marked by unity of the faith and by the knowledge of the Son of God until we all reach. So, so we serve to make the presence of God known until for the purpose that we all grow up into maturity, which is marked by unity, knowledge of God, and the likeness of Christ. This is the purpose of the church. And to fulfill this purpose, we have a number of values that we have been stressing uh, to help us get that and have helped lay the foundation for some of our decision making. And the first is safety. If we're going to serve others, we have to be mindful of what concerns them. If we're going to help them know the presence of Christ, we have to be concerned about their well-being. Um, Paul talks a lot about this in his letters, about being mindful of other people's needs and not our convenience. You know, I, I don't eat meat for those that don't eat meat. We set aside our own convenience for the sake of others' needs. So, so safety, service uh, is involving the safety. But second, uh, shared leadership and to, uh, to equip the saints. It's the, the body, the people in the church that are equipped to serve, not a token or a set aside or paid group of folks, but we all serve until we all come to unity. And to do that faithfully, everyone is involved. All our owners, I talked about this last week, and we share in leadership. Stewardship is another value we use. We want to be mindful of what God has called us to do, to use the resource he's given to us and uh, to really uh, live out that calling. And the fourth is to serve multiple generations and to particularly reach out to folks that are young and old, to, to minister to the preschooler, to uh, the oldest member of our church. And so those are the values. We, we seek to serve so the body of Christ may be known. We seek to become mature. We do that by serving and being conscious of people's safety, sharing leadership, stewardship, and serving people of multiple generations. That's really the foundation for what we talked about last night. We talked about our reopening plan, and so that value of being mindful of other people's needs is involved. We are certainly conservative on our approach. We don't know all of the dates, but we have several markers. For now, our campus will remain closed, and uh, we will not have folks and groups meeting on campus yet. Yeah, we will be working on some private trials to get ready, working on our processes and procedures, but for now, and we, we hope by the fall that that will change. Preschools are another issue, and you can go on, the town hall will be recorded and put on today, and you can know what the preschool openings are. TCA is opening at summer session next week. MSCE is opening up with TCA fully on September 8th. Last night, we also heard from our chair of staff parish, Nancy Hannaford, and she talked about the council's decision several months ago to reduce our staffing budget by 15%. She shared how we had sought to delay that, that uh, many other churches in the Methodist denomination and other businesses reduced staff at the beginning of the pandemic. We took the PPP loan 
and we're hoping that it would uh, snap back to in place and that uh, these reductions would not be as um, deep as they are, but in fact, uh, the time has come and we explained some of that last night. Please be in prayer for those who are affected by this season of pruning. Now, pruning isn't just about reducing costs. Uh, one, of the, one of the great things is that we have been restructuring and refocusing and building anew during this season of pandemic. 12 weeks ago, we didn't have virtual worship and we put together those services and continue to improve. 12 weeks ago, we weren't doing daily devotionals and uh, all the different things that are online. We weren't doing family worship. And so all that work has been done and I celebrate that. In the last 12 weeks, we've restructured our pastoral care, moving from one or two people that are involved in caring pastorally to the entire team of pastors. Now you can get a hold of a pastor 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All of us are involved. All of us are, are meeting and talking about ways to support those. We're calling people on their anniversary dates and broadening our reach and care. We've started a fund to help those who are in need economically, and we've gathered a sort a center of resources on our website for those that could use support through this time. Ministries continue. Anua just started their next class of 220 youth in Kenya and doing that great work. Even though they've had to close some ministries due to the pandemic, they continue to move forward. Foundry with this ministry to uh, those aging out of the foster care system are continuing to counsel and mentor those uh, involved in that process. And that's a group that is needed more than ever in this time of isolation. And so I, I celebrate that and I thank you for your participation in this great family. And I rest in the confidence that, that God is doing something through this season of testing. That's the second scripture verse I want to read for you tonight. Uh, it is uh, James 1, 3 and 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. When I was in high school, I played on a traveling soccer club, and we had the opportunity to become one of the best clubs in the state of Illinois that year. And it wasn't easy. It was a time of perseverance, a time of hard work and discipline. I learned a lot about teamwork and overcoming. We would lose games. We would uh, lose people to injuries. We, we had to really double down on, uh, you know, sweat equity and so forth. And I think about, you know, all that I learned out of that process and here think that we're not just on a sports team, that we're about work that is significant, the work of transformation, the work of being the hands and feet of Christ. And that this is a time of testing, but we have, this is what we have going for us. We have the fact that God is with us, Emmanuel, and that God can and will do good even in the midst of the testing and we know that God works for good for those, that in all things God works for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And we know that God will overcome, that the church is God's vehicle to bring about the emergence of heaven on earth. And so I thank you for being a part, and I pray for you as a part, and I pray for our church that as we go through this time, of pruning and testing as we seek to become more mature, that you would know truly God with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.